Hi everyone, my name is Maxim Damling and I would like to welcome you to our today's podcast about empowering the workforce through the people value proposition. Around the table, we have the pleasure to welcome two experts from our tax and ad advisory departments. So thank you for joining Serafin and Bart. Perhaps can you shortly introduce yourself? Well, I'm Serafin. I am the partner for the people and transformation. So what we do is everything around people going from um, uh, HR and HR transformations over culture, workforce, leadership, and change management. And Bart, maybe over to you. Yes, so thank you for having me in this podcast. So my name is Bart van der Busse. I'm a director within the tax and legal practice, and I'm uh, leading our personal income tax and uh, reward team. So we advise clients in uh, this area. So I'm happy to share some insights on today's topic. Okay. Thank you both. And I suggest that we kick off with our podcast. I'm very eager to learn more about uh, the, the concept people value proposition. Uh, Serafin, can you tell us where it comes from and where it's going to? Yes, of, of course. Huh? So um, yeah, people value um, proposition, in fact, it is the promise of an organization that you make towards your people. Huh? And the definition of people is, is important. Uh, it has changed. And in the past, it was called like, employee value proposition and you're really only talking about the people who had a direct contra or contract with you but in fact you were missing out a lot of uh, people also working for you for example your contingent workers uh, etc so that's why kind of we changed the name to people value proposition because it's a more inclusive approach uh, it's really including everybody uh, which is part of your workforce um, in the in the proposition you make and in the kind of promise you make as an organization towards your people. Okay. And in practice, Bert, what concrete shape uh, does the people value proposition take and how is it expressed? Uh, certainly, Maxim, and, and perhaps a pitfall that you could have if you talk about value proposition and that you immediately think about rewards. It's, of course, an important component and, of course, my area of, of specialty. Uh, but I think if we talk, like Seraphine said, about promises, we should zoom a bit out uh, and in the first instance look at the, the purpose of the company, give people a sense of belonging, uh, a common goal. So that's also important uh, to have to communicate about that. And that's also a promise towards uh, your employees that they know in which field they are contributing to. I think uh, a second one is, of course, the entire uh, people experience. Uh, so that's also, I think, uh, how you are enabled to do your work and how do you experience yourself in, in this respect. Thirdly, I think as well, everything to do with total reward, of course, and that's indeed also broader than only financial rewards. And thirdly, of course, is uh, putting it all together. That is how you communicate also both internally and externally. And it gives also, I think, brand and reputation. Yeah, and I think you bring up a great point and maybe something that uh, we didn't mention, but what we also mean is to talk about people value proposition. It is not just for the people only already engaged with you and is also for the people that are potentially in the future engaging uh, with you so for example candidates and so on they should also be part of the kind of people value proposition you're creating for you as a company so thank you already for discussing why it is important uh, for organizations uh, um, can you also tell some yeah more of the key components of an effective and concrete value uh, pro people value proposition well if you if you would make it more concrete, um, I would perhaps try to look at what we actually do ourselves within uh, PwC. Uh, we also want to be an attractive uh, employer. I think if you look at our own strategy, of course, talent is of course one of our five uh, key areas. I would say it's everything to do with uh, with talent, and so it's only with people that we can realize our ambition. So if I put it in other words, uh, Seraphine. I think uh, people are an important stakeholder uh, uh, as also other stakeholders in, in this field. I think people is crucial for the success of, of a company and almost of any company. Yeah? It's, uh, it's the people that gonna define um, uh, the satisfaction of your clients because happy people will lead to happy clients. And how do you get happy people? Well, because of the fact that you create a good people value proposition uh, and that you walk the talk you can make a promise but if you don't live up to it you'll have a problem indeed 
And I referred earlier to purpose. And, and I think if you look at our own uh, company purpose, I think we have a common purpose uh, to build trust uh, in society and solve important problems for our clients, but as well for our communities in which we live and work. So that's again, I think uh, important uh, if you want to be attractive uh, and, and an interesting employer, we also need to find people who say, okay, we, we want to contribute in this field. I think when we take a look at the, the people experience, uh, um, I think the workplace, for instance, that to make it concrete and technology play an important role. Um, and that's now one of the areas that we as PwC have heavily invested in, uh, both in the workplace as well as the way we work. And we call it then actually a bit a hybrid way. It's human led uh, people are important, uh, but it's tech powered. Um, and of course, in terms of reward, and, and we had a, a previous uh, podcast session as well together, Correct, Sarah, yeah. and, and we talked there also about uh, total wellness. Uh, so it's more indeed than the financials, but it's also uh, boosting, for instance, um, the mental and physical well-being. And that's also, I think, we have different programs uh, within uh, PwC to, to help in this respect. But as well, you referred as well to inclusion and diversity. Exactly. Inclusion and diversity is an important one. Um, Culture is important one. It's just so so you see it's a holistic spectrum. It is not just reward or just salary. There's so many more things. Uh, inclusion, diversity, your culture, the the way you team up with the people and you to into your organization is in fact kind of the yeah, the exposure on what you're standing for as a company. And then also we communicate about it. So uh, things that we are referring to, uh, to make it more concrete, you will also find back, for instance, in our annual report. Yeah. Um, so that I think, Maxime, we try to make it more concrete just mm -hmm. that buying how we do it ourselves. But in the end, then, if we assist clients, we'll, of course, guide them to these okay. uh, building blocks, I would say. Exactly. It's, it's indeed a combination of, of different kind of building blocks, more tangible and less tangible building blocks, but all together for your people value proposition. Okay, that's very interesting. And um, yeah, and how can we actually make sure it is in line with the needs of our of the workforce? Mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent question. Eh? Um, I think Bart, you can agree with me. The the old approach of one size fits all it is not working anymore. Eh? So I think the market gets complex. Um, everybody is innovative. Eh? Um, everybody in the market also is looking for the same kind of people, same kind of talent. So you need to have fine. Uh, and you need to find new ways of doing uh, what you do to attract the right people. And in fact, I think there's like four things we can really mention. Uh, first of all, as an employer, it is really knowing who you are and what you're standing for. Huh? So what makes you, you, in fact. And so why should people sign up with you and not with your competitor or with somebody else in the market? I think that's definitely number one. Number two uh, is the experience you're going to give to your people. Uh, it is, and this is linked to a lot of things. It's the way how you communicate. It is, it is um, your culture. It is your view on sustainability. It's your view on inclusion and diversity, but also back on, on reward and salary. It is still an important component of it, but it's not an exclusive component, uh, component anymore. Uh. So yeah, financial, like we already said. Uh, but then also you have the external environment. How are people looking at your brand? Is your brand perceived as an impactful one, one that is really uh, working, for example, on sustainability, having a good and warm culture, etc. So, so it's kind of different components. So it's, it's you as an employer, also the experience you give to the people, financial one plus, huh? I call it financial plus because it's not exclusively financial, as well as yeah, the perception of your external environment. Couldn't agree more, Seraphine. I think with those uh, four focus points, we also use them towards our clients. Uh, and then typically uh, to make it also uh, more, more tangible of how we work with our clients is, of course, we will, of course, start with um, the SE set. Uh, typically, I yes. put on now my consulting hat. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's, it's still important to get a clear understanding. What is the situation today? How does the workforce look like? Because mm -hmm. it will be, of course, for every uh, client and company, it will be different. But how the, the their current workforce and people uh, is, is is structured? Correct. Yeah, you have you have to know what makes you you today. Correct. Exactly, and then also look to the future. What makes you you in the future? So and that's indeed a road and a journey that has to be taken, isn't it? Yes, and that's indeed our second step: uh, defining together 
what is our ambition and how we will get there. Then I think thirdly is, of course, uh, with those people, our value proposition, what is the impact that we want to have? And we touched already upon, of course, attraction, recruitment. Mm -hmm. But of course, uh, Seraphine, that is not the only component of the employee life cycle. Of course not. Uh, and I think your people value proposition, like you clearly point out, uh, Bart, it is through each and every uh, moment, uh, moments that matter, but also informal moments. Um, formal moments it's through each and every every interaction um yeah that it's important to be lived and seraphine and how will you do this yeah that's a good question so what we typically do is working with personas eh? and maybe we can explain the concept of a persona a little bit eh? a persona is a representation of a stakeholder group so in fact you can see it as a kind of subdivision within your workforce so you kind of cut up your uh, workforce in smaller groups, groups with similar characteristics, similar needs, similar preferences, similar expectations. Huh? So, and then you gotta start working with them. An example of it can be your managers. Another example can be your candidates. Uh, another example can be your contingent workers, etc. Huh? And then you really start working with them and defining what would be the experience you like? Uh, what do you need um, to be successful, to be a performing and happy employee? Mm -hmm. So you kind of work with those groups around those stakeholders and you take them on the journey. And like Bart already said, uh, you look at your as is, but you also define your to be. So where are we today and what are we standing for today? But where do we want to head to and where do we want to be in the future? But I don't know if you have anything to add or... No, I would agree. Uh, the persona, as you said, is a form of segmentation. And that's so, so we also um, touched upon also in our previous uh, podcast. Like we said, okay, we, we can do uh, preference studies. But sometimes my experience is that uh, it's not always a fit uh, to do a large study for clients. Uh, and sometimes also I think just um, an easy survey can help to give some insight yeah. as a start. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I think it's, it's always good to have indeed a survey uh, often complemented with kind of interviews or just some focus groups uh, because then you have the qualitative and the quantitative input uh, and you really know what you're talking about because assumptions never work. Matt Bart, you are mentioning the reward aspect. Can you tell us more about this? Yes, and I think if you want to connect uh, that the people value proposition more to the financial offering um, and how is that indeed perceived at the end uh, by the workforce, there all again to make it more concrete eh? um i think as, uh, as a company you want to uh, be sustainable eh? you, you say okay that's very important for us for instance we want to uh emphasize or make the switch to the greenification of our car mm -hmm. print, for instance eh? i think that's also yeah. i think a very clear objective uh, that offers some value not only for employees but to society but there you can indeed connect it to typically systems we know like the mobility budget um, yeah, sort of thing at the beginning, uh, you also, I remember that you are saying that people value proposition approach also considers to attract candidates. Correct. Um, yeah. Can you tell us more about this? Sure. So, so, uh, um, people value proposition is really the promise you make as a company. Huh? So it's really what you are standing for as a company and what you offer to your people and the broadest sense of the, of the words people. Huh? So I think it's uh, it's it's really what can differentiate you in the market. Uh, it's what people are signing up for with you. Huh? It, it it is it is really what sets you apart and really attracts you. So it has a link with your brand reputation. It has a link on the organization you really want to be in the market and the kind of people you you want to attract. So. Uh, so uh, we, we talked about various benefits uh, ranging from better alignment of, of practices with the strategy, better understanding of the workforce, policies, processes, I uh, also mentioned, and also finally uh, to attract and retain talents. Are there any other advantages that come to your mind? Well, I can pick in on that as you refer indeed to, to policies and, and they are typically also think about being uh, compliant I think in the first instance is of course uh, uh, do what you tell and that's why I also gave an example how we do it within our uh, own company and maybe if I may add do what you tell and tell what you do yes indeed, <laughs> indeed. it's the two the two, two way yeah. street uh, and that's also about communication communication Correct. at the end is also a two-way street 
I think there we, uh, of course, explained about annual reporting. That's, of course, more the action reporting uh, part. But uh, I think it's also important uh, if we look at the, the broader aspect, as Serafit said in the beginning, uh, we expanded, I would say, uh, the label, if I may call it like that, from employee to people. So that means as well that uh, contractors are in scope, uh, gig workers are in scope. This also gives sometimes some complexities uh, that you also should take into account. So therefore, I think also policies in order to be compliant is also uh, a very uh, important one. Perhaps a topic that we did not touch upon is perhaps also more the international talent pool. Mm -hmm. So of course, having people international mobile, again, therefore, I think that can be a real added value in your people value proposition. But I think it brings along some uh, points of attention in which we assist our clients to make sure that, if, if, that they are compliant. For instance, if they want, want to work from anywhere, we have staycations, etc. Yeah. This sounds very good, but has some consequences. Of course. Yeah. Indeed. Sounds very interesting. Um, perhaps can you tell us more about, yeah, for example, Edward, you assisted a company with a people value proposition. Yeah, certainly. And I think uh, in, in, in my field, um, you, of course, also uh, want to make it more data driven. So we had recently a client where we offered, for instance, a preference study. We said, OK, perhaps it's uh, too huge as a starting point. But there we made actually a tailored uh, questionnaire to get some inside inputs, how uh, their workforce looks today uh, at the, their reward uh, package. And then also, it, of course, it was in the context of, for instance, the greenifications of, of car, because we know that's a sensitive and then a well-appreciated uh, benefit, mm -hmm. for instance. And before you make changes, it's good to make that more data-driven. Um, I think that's an example, uh, mm -hmm. a very concrete uh, example, uh, why on which we assisted clients. But I assume, Serafine, you also have other examples. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, we have many examples, uh, but one that pops up into my mind is... Uh, yeah, when around the pandemic, of course, uh, the pandemic has shaken the world a little bit. Uh, uh, and what we saw is that uh, for the company we were uh, we were doing the the project is that the people did not feel that the company was living up to the uh, yeah the people value proposition that uh, that that they made in the past. So what we have been doing is really conducting workshops, uh, looking at focus groups, and um, seeing how we how collaboration uh, was working, et cetera. And based on all of, all of those uh, inputs that we got, there was kind of 15 recommendations that we that we saw for the company. They put it, we put out a roadmap, a detailed roadmap to go step by step and to address uh, the points that has been, has been raised. And in fact, this roadmap has made sure that we kind of could close the gap between on one hand, expectations of the employees uh, and people in the broader sense of, of the word, as well as the leaders. So this meant that, in fact, leaders and the people came closer together. And then based on that, uh, the company was able to really live up again to that people value proposition. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for sharing these examples. Uh, so from what I hear today, I feel confident saying that people value proposition is quite a pivotal solution to show organizations actually care about every worker involved in their company and make their vision and purpose come to life in a tangible and pragmatic manner. Many advantages are at stake for clients such as attracting, retaining and engaging an organization's workforce, but the people value proposition also helps in improving employer branding. On this note, uh, we will close this podcast and I invite you to watch us in the space on social media or website or by contacting us directly. Thank you both, Serafine and Bart, for joining this podcast and you listeners um, also. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.